Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with crispy fresh corn fritters. That's right, when it comes to eating fresh sweet corn, I think pretty much everyone's in agreement that the best way is right off the cob. But when it comes to the second best way, that's where we're going to get some arguments. And while these aren't really the kind of arguments you can win or lose, they're still fun to have. Especially when you're arguing for a recipe like this, which happens to be beautiful, easy, delicious, and, as you'll see, a little bit dangerous. But we'll get to that. For now, let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing we're going to need to do is find some beautiful, fresh, sweet corn. And I'm lucky enough to be using the famous white corn from Brentwood, California, which really is amazing. And what it lacks in yellow color, it more than makes up for it in incredible sweetness. And will I be mad if you don't use fresh corn? Well, I won't be mad, but I will be disappointed. And by the way, if you're not sure how to get the corn off the cob, I'm going to put a link in the blog post to a video to show you how to do that. And then besides finding some fresh corn, the other thing we're going to want to do ahead of time is make our sauce, which has a grand total of three ingredients, including some mayonnaise that we're going to spike with lots of chipotle pepper, which, as you may know, is a smoked jalapeno, so it is a little bit spicy. And then we'll finish this off with some freshly squeezed lime juice. And that's it. We will stir that together and simply refrigerate that until needed. And obviously, with any kind of sauces like this, the pepper and lime are to taste. Okay, so taste and adjust. You are, after all, the babysitters of how to sauce your crispy fresh corn fritters. So just because I call for two teaspoons of chipotle, don't assume that's how much you're going to put in. But regardless of amounts, we'll go ahead and mix that up, at which point we can move into final production, which is going to involve making a ridiculously simple batter that'll start with the white from one large egg, to which we're going to add some ice water, or just very, very cold water. Not to be confused with berry, berry, gold water. Hmm, not sure why I thought of that name. And then we'll also go ahead and toss in a pinch of salt before grabbing a whisk and beating this mixture until it's nice and foamy. And I realize some people get nervous when they see something that looks like a meringue. But relax. Unlike some batters that include egg whites, this one requires no finesse and no gentle folding or anything like that. Because once we've whipped our mixture for a minute or two, and it looks like this, what we're going to do is whisk in some cornstarch and self-rising flour. And we're going to keep whisking until we have what looks like a very thin pancake batter. Oh, and do me a favor. Please ignore all the lumps you see when I first start whisking this. You're probably not going to have those because you're not going to dump in your cornstarch and flour and then wait two minutes while you change your camera position and then start whisking. But I'm actually kind of glad you saw that because it reinforces the point this is not a very temperamental batter. Just whisk it together with complete disregard for preserving any of those egg white bubbles. Because we're still going to have millions of microscopic bubbles. Plus, we have that baking powder in the self-rising flour. Which, as usual, I'll tell you how to make your own on the blog post. And then once our batter's mixed, we have one step left. And that's to introduce our fresh corn. And the reason you see me not adding it all at once is because I kind of want to judge by eye the proper ratio between the corn and the batter. So even though I took the kernels off two cobs of corn, Depending on the size, maybe that would be too much for this batter. But having said that, it wasn't, and I ended up using it all. But the point is, regardless of the amounts I give, as far as the ratio between corn and batter goes, this is what we want it to look like. And then once that's set, we can go ahead and fry these up in about a half inch of vegetable oil that we've heated to 350 degrees. And we're going to cook these for about two minutes per side, or until browned and crispy. And since I'm home alone, I'm just going to make one for now, for demo purposes. But feel free to do as many as you can fit in the pan without crowding. And then let me drop a little fun fact about fresh corn on you. Roughly one out of every three or four hundred kernels of corn will explode during this process. Which is why if you have one, I highly recommend using one of these splatter guards. And as you could probably tell from the appearance, I've had this one for about 20 years. So one of these screens is not a bad idea. And I'll quickly let you see and hear why. Which reminds me, something that covers your eyes is not a bad idea either. So be very careful, and if you have kids in the kitchen, maybe try to talk them into doing this step. And the other safety tip here is when you flip this, make sure you use two utensils. That way you're much less likely to splash the oil. Although of course I looked at the viewfinder and took my eye off the pan and totally splashed mine anyway. But still good advice. So I went ahead and cooked that for two minutes per side, or until browned and crispy, at which point we'll remove that to a paper towel to drain for a few seconds. And if everything's gone according to plan, it should look something like this. So these should cook till they're nicely browned and crispy, which is hard to tell just by looking. So let me grab a fork for auditory verification. Oh yeah, that sounds good. 
And I really do need to try this little piece. Except I sort of messed up my shape. But that's okay. We can rebuild it. We have the technology. That was just me being the $6 million man of having a plan. And then feel free to enjoy these as is. They are fantastic. But I'm going to elevate mine, as the fancy foodies like to say, by topping it with some fresh Dungeness crab. And then we'll go ahead and finish up with our spicy tangy sauce, as well as I'll redden up that crab with a little extra cayenne. And then I finished up with some strategically placed slices of green onion. And then last but not least, maybe a little wedge of lime. Just make sure you cut it small and sexy like I did. And that's it. Our crispy fresh corn fritter with crab is done. And the first time I made this, I was really hoping it tasted as good as it looked. And it did. Maybe better. And for me, what makes this so enjoyable is the amount of corn. If you were hoping this is one of the fritters that's almost all dough, with just a few specks of corn, you're not going to enjoy this. I mean, this thing is pretty much all corn. And the batter here was really more of a crispy glue to hold everything together. It really is quite extraordinary. And that's not even taking into consideration the crab, which really amplifies all this deliciousness. And hopefully now you'll see why in the intro I said this is probably my second favorite way to eat fresh corn. So I really do love everything about this. And I'm not exactly sure when it's going to happen this summer, but at some point you're going to run out of things to do with fresh corn. And when that happens, I really do hope you remember this video so you can give this a try. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. <laughs>